were you with the SCLS? CS? Until I married in 66, from 1960 to 1966. Here's Dr. King and Ralph uh, in a march. What was Ralph Abernathy uh, like? Ralph was very supportive of Dr. King. He was like the, his right arm. Dr. King depended on him a great deal. Um, they had been together in Alabama, and both uh, Dr. King's, their wives were very close. Ralph, they were really like brothers, very close. Yeah, Fred Shuttlesworth. Out of Birmingham, Alabama, who was a very strong voice in Birmingham, Alabama. And he moved to Cincinnati, and I you know, knew him from the Civil Rights Movement in Birmingham when we were there, as well as in Cincinnati, Ohio. And Bob Moses. Bob Moses was a young man out of Harvard who came south to work on the Civil Rights Movement, mainly, mainly voting rights, and spent a lot of time educating young blacks in math. Ella Baker. Boy, this is an interesting picture of Ella Baker. Um, Ella Baker was head of the student movement. She worked with many of the young students, trained them, uh, was a great advisor to them, had difficulty in relating to Martin Luther King, Jr., because she had difficulty with ministers. And that was a, a, a source of tension within the movement, was, was Ella Baker. One of my favorite, Fannie Lou Hamer. Fannie Lou was out of Mississippi. She spent time at our home when we lived in Cincinnati after we got married. But she was a great lady. Um, a woman, a very strong person, who stood uh, with many of the people in getting folk out to vote and getting them registered to vote and going to the Democratic Convention and being a part of that uh, strong change there. Stokely Carmichael. Of course, everybody knew Stokely. Stokely was a very militant, very strong, very brilliant young man um, who was a little too militant at some point in terms he brought in the um, the point of view of of violence he introduced that to a large extent. How did that, how did that play with Martin Luther King? What it didn't play well with him at all. Yeah. He had real difficulty with the direction that the young people were moving, and to a large extent, I think that he felt that it was going to really destroy everything that he was trying to achieve through nonviolence. And he strongly believed that nonviolence was the only answer. And blacks did not have the means to have a violent struggle. They didn't have an army. They didn't own uh, a lot of guns. So they, that was a, a totally a loser from that point of view. Um, but in his heart, he believed strongly that nonviolence was really the only way to make the change. It was the only way to bring people into the fold to bring about change within the civil rights movement. And not only that, that it was the only way that people could survive living together um, because It was a way of life with him. He just felt it should be applied in your relationships with your children, in your relationships with your family. And he argued that point all the time, even though when some of the students wanted, wanted to take him in another direction, he couldn't be moved on that. Did There's he ever no try way. to reach out to Stokely Carmichael's of the world? Oh, yes, absolutely. But they didn't want to hear at that point. They felt that they knew more than he knew. And they would argue with him. He would listen, but he would stand and say that they were really on the wrong path. And this was not the way to achieve um, integration. It was not the way to bring about what he called the beloved community. Oh, Julian Bond. 
Julian was kind of the uh, public relations person for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. He did all of their um, news reports. He was the one that that communicated with the media and um, was a part of the strategist team for the Student non Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Had struggles with Dr. King because he was a part of that younger group and had difficulty with ministers being the leader. Um, Septima Clark, I'm sure that's, yeah, Septima. Some of these people, are, their pictures are so young looking. But Septima was a fascinating woman. She came from South Carolina. She had been expelled from her school from teaching because she was a member of the NAACP and she refused to uh, disown her relationship with the NAACP. And this was at a time when they were expelling teachers for members of the, being a member of the NAACP um, throughout the South, mainly in the Carolinas. And she stood her ground and refused uh, to do anything that would compromise her position. She was also the person that worked with Dorothy Cotton. You said you had interviewed Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Dorothy and Sept Septima ran the Citizenship Education Program. And they trained uh, people in citizenship education. They worked all over the South training them how to vote, uh, setting up, helping them set up um, voting schools, or schools for training for voting and citizenship. And Septima was the driving force behind that. Wilkins, who was head of the NAACP, had some tensions in his relationship with Dr. King. Unfortunately, the NAACP had some tensions because they felt like they should have been the head of everything happening in the movement. Whitney Young, who was head of the Urban League, and um, he was part of the, the core of Dr. King, Roy Wilkins. Byard Rustin was, an, was just a brilliant, brilliant uh, strategic person who could pull people together and put strategy, to, strategy together like no other individual. Dr. King depended on him heavily. John Lewis, many of you know about John Lewis, who is now in Congress, and he was with the student organization, and would have run-ins occasionally with Dr. King around how they would, how they would um, approach certain issues and how they would um, what side whether or not to be more forceful and Dr. King was a person to that you he was deliberate but he felt that you had to be more thoughtful about the way you approach things. Rosa Parks um, the very quiet very unassuming not the kind of person you, you would ever think would be the person to just sit down and not move, but she had been trained over a period of time to really be prepared for that moment, and she rose to the occasion. If I had, you know, I just feel like I just, with, I hope I get class credit for this tremendous history lesson of the civil rights. Um, if I had a card with your picture on it, what would it say on the back? Worked in the background. I was um, a part of the team, but not out front. <laughs>